In this lecture, let us discuss about basis path testing, which is a white box testing technique used to design test cases based on the control flow of a program. So here the main goal of this technique is to ensure that all possible paths through the program are tested at least once. Thus, it provides a structured approach to achieve thorough code coverage. So it mainly focuses on executing independent paths in order to ensure that all the statements or any conditions in the code are tested adequately or they are tested well. Coming to the key concepts here, the first one is a control flow graph. So, which is a graphical representation of a program's control flow, where usually the nodes they represent statements or blocks of a code and the edges represent the flow of control between these nodes. So, here creating this control flow graph is considered as a first step in basis path testing. Then we have independent paths. Independent path is one that traverses at least one new edge of the control flow graph. Basis path testing, it focuses on identifying these independent paths to ensure that all logic in the code is exercised. Then you need to calculate cyclometric complexity, which is a metric used to measure the complexity of a program. And it can be calculated based on the control flow graph and helps in determining the number of independent paths. So it can be taken as E minus N plus 2P or N E minus N plus 2. So in case when exit point is directly connected to the entry point, then the graph is considered as strongly connected and cyclometric complexity in that case it is defined as E minus N plus P. So here P is nothing but number of connected components. Say in case of this, uh, in case of a single method, P is always equal to 1. So for a single subroutine, formula can be defined as E minus N plus and these are the steps for basis path testing first you need to create a control flow graph here develop a cfg for the program to visualize the flow of control then determine the cyclometric complexity using the formula to understand how many independent paths need to be tested Next, identify independent paths. So, extract the independent paths from the control flow graph. Each path should be a unique combination of edges that represents a distinct flow of control. Then, design test cases. For each independent path identified, create test cases that will ensure that those paths are executed during testing. Next, execute test cases. So, run the test cases and Evaluate the coverage. So, you need to analyze the results to identify any defects or issues in the code. Let us see one example for basis path testing. Say, suppose this is a code given for us. Now, our first step is to create a control flow graph for this. So, let us first identify number of blocks in this code. First is, here uh, as we are taking start and end, this start becomes the first block. Next, our condition is if x greater than 0, which becomes second block. If this condition is true, return positive. Let us take it as block 3. If this condition is false, then check if x is less than 0, which is taken as block 4. If x less than 0 is true, move to this block 5. If this condition is false, move to block 6. And in either of the cases, so after executing this, you can end. In all the three cases, once you complete them, you can reach this end block. Right? So this is a flow graph. Now, after this, step two is we need to calculate cyclometric complexity. For that, first we need to find out total number of edges and nodes in the graph. So how many number of edges we have? One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So we have 8 edges. Number of nodes depends on number of blocks. So how many blocks we have? 7. So now value will be 8 minus 7 plus 2 which gives you 3. 
So it indicates that there are three test cases or we need to design three test cases for this given code. Now, third step is to find out independent paths. So take the start and end. In between, we need to consider the path. So first path is this side, right? Start, check the condition, then move to end. So start, check the condition, move to positive, end. So you can even write it as with block numbers. That is 1, 2, 3 and 7. So it can be either 1, 2, 3, 7. And take the second path. Second path is start x greater than 0. Move to this elif part. After this, if x is less than 0, move to negative side and then end. Right? So, this is the second path. What are the values? 1, 2, 4, 5, 7. So, this second block can be, second path can be written as 1, 2, 4, 5, 7. Right? Third, third path is 1, 2, 4, this leftover part, 6 and 7. 1, 2, 4, 6, 7. 1, 2, 4, 6, 7. So, we got total 3 parts. You can either use this notation or you can use this one also. Now, what is step 4? We need to design test cases, right? So, we will get 3 test cases. Here, based on this value, you can find that. Now, we will take one positive value, one negative value and 0. You can take any value here. And the outcome will be expected. Positive for the positive value, negative for the negative value and 0 if the value is 0. Step 5 is you need to execute the test cases, these 3 cases and then analyze the results. So, you need to check whether the code is having any errors or not during this evaluation. 